Greetings and salutations, magical chemists. Let's take a look at what happens when rice calculations get a little bit complicated. So let's look at an example to see what that might look like. In this problem, we're going to find the equilibrium concentrations of all the different chemicals that exist in a 0.15 molar solution of HCN. That means we have our initial concentration of HCN as 0.15, but no H plus or CN minus yet. Of course, we're going to put the change row in the rice table by looking at it stoichiometrically in terms of X. And then we can combine the initial and the change to figure out what it'll be at equilibrium in terms of X. Well, now we just need to plug into the equilibrium constant expression since they told us the value of the equilibrium constant and solve for X. You might be thinking, wait, why is this complicated? This looks just like all the other rice tables we set up and solved. And it's true, but let's go ahead and set this up so that we could solve it algebraically. So I need to get the x out of the denominator, and so I multiplied both sides by 0.15 minus x. And if you're looking at this problem, you might recognize that there is a very specific strategy for how to solve for x. After I use the distributive property, I have an expression that has an x squared term, a term with an x on it, and a term without an x. Hmm, I know what you were thinking. At least I hope it's the quadratic equation, because that's what we need to solve this problem. For the quadratic equation, we need to rewrite this so everything is equal to zero. And then, I don't know if you remember the general quadratic equation. I know the math teachers have this awesome song for it. But you identify the a, b, and c for the coefficients for the x squared term, the x term, and then no x term. And you plug into the quadratic equation. So if this is your quadratic equation in general, we need to identify our a, b, and c values, and then just plug into and solve for x. And once you have those values identified, you literally just plug in and solve. And remember, you're going to get two different values for x. Mathematically, you get that x can be plus or minus 8.6 times 10 to the negative 6. But this is where you have to know chemically what's going on. Remember that x is the change in a concentration. And so at the end, you're going to end up with x as your concentration of the H plus and the CN minus ions. You can't have a negative concentration. So that means that second answer is invalid and can be ignored. Okay, I'm running out of space and I still actually need to plug X into the equilibrium concentrations. Okay, to get the equilibrium concentration of HCN, you just take your 0.15 minus X. Well, <laughs> That's a tiny number, and I wrote it out not in scientific notation, just to help you see the sig figs, because yes, sig figs are still a thing. The 0.15 is significant to two places after the decimal, and 0.86 is significant to, well, a lot more places after the decimal. But remember, all we care about for our particular when you're subtracting is place value. So this actually turns out to be 0.15 minus a super tiny amount, is still basically 0.15. Finding the concentration of H plus and CN minus at equilibrium is even easier because it is literally equal to X, and we know what X is. This question is honestly basically like all the other rice questions we've been doing. But the reason it's a little more complicated is to solve it, we needed the quadratic equation. However, I have some good news for you. You should actually never have to use the quadratic equation on the AP Chem test. Wait, what? Well, okay, I know if you've got a calculator and your calculator's got the quadratic plugged in, it's, it's really not too bad to solve. However, it can be time consuming and lead to easy mistakes. And there is an approximation we can use, kind of a shortcut. So what I am about to show you is how you can make a simple approximation that makes the math much easier to solve and means you don't actually need the quadratic equation after all. It is called the X is negligible approximation. Negligible is a great word. It means so small as to basically not really have an effect, to not make a difference. In our case, it's basically going to be so tiny that it won't affect any addition or subtraction in our equilibrium. That's kind of weird, right? Like, what do I mean so tiny it doesn't affect addition or subtraction? Well, 
let's take a look at that problem we just finished. Do you remember when we were solving for the equilibrium concentration of your HCN? And we had 0.15 minus x, but hey, x was so, 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 so tiny that with sig figs, after we subtracted, we still got the same answer we started with. That's what we mean by negligible. You might be thinking, well, okay, sure, but we could tell that number was tiny because we actually solved for the number. How am I supposed to know that the number is going to be so tiny that I don't need to solve for it when I haven't solved for it? Believe it or not, there is a way. There are two common problem types where you're allowed to make the x is a negligible approximation. And you're either going to be starting with a really tiny k value or a really huge k value. The very first one is what we looked at in our example problem. We had a really tiny value for k. And we started from only reactants. A really small value of K means at equilibrium, when the reaction reaches stability, then there's gonna be mostly reactants. And if you're starting from mostly reactants, and at equilibrium you're gonna have mostly reactants, means you're not gonna change much. The change will be negligible. It's the opposite when you're looking with large K values. Because, well, <laughs> in this case, it's only if you're starting from products. Large value for K, product favored, lots of products at equilibrium. If you're starting from products, you're already about at equilibrium, which means there's going to be a negligible change. Now, interesting note, it turns out this assumption about X being negligible is only valid when X is small enough. You're like, small enough? What's small enough? Well, technically speaking, x has to be less than 5% of the initial concentration. Now, if you haven't solved for x, you, of course, you're like, how am I supposed to know if it's less than 5%? You make the approximation based on your starting k value and your starting concentrations, and then you check to see if it was valid at the end. And most of the time, it will be. I've only literally had it not work once. One time I calculated 5.1% and I was kind of salty about it. But, other, but in general, this approximation will be valid. So let's go ahead and look back at that example problem we tried. But this time, we're going to try the x's negligible approximation. Since it's the exact same problem, the beginning is still the same. You set up your rice table, you write out your equilibrium constant expression, you plug in in terms of x. But here is where we're going to look at this and go, huh, you know, that's a really tiny value for K. It's super small. It's going to be, this, this equilibrium system is going to be mostly reactants. And, and you know what? Hey, I started with only reactants. That means this is a great place to do the X is negligible approximation. Now, on a free response problem, to make the X is negligible approximation, you do need to justify. But luckily, the justification is really easy. You're going to take a look at the subtraction, and you're going to say, hey, 0.15 minus x, you know what? My equilibrium constant is super small. It's like so much smaller than that starting concentration of 0.15. And that means I'm going to say x is negligible. So that's it. That's all you have to write. But you do need to justify. You're not allowed to just do the next mathematical step without explaining what you're doing. OK. So now you might be thinking, well, but what am I justifying? I haven't done anything yet. Here's the magic. Here's the shortcut. It's beautiful. We happen to know, because we did this problem already, that if you take 0.15 minus x, it's basically just 0.15. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to rewrite, but I'm getting rid of x. I'm saying, nope, nobody loves you. You are negligible. Poof, you have disappeared. Now you might be thinking, um, but you didn't get rid of the x on the top. Yeah, I can't get rid of the x on the top because tiny numbers multiplied by each other have, are still really important. x is negligible only removes the x from addition or subtraction. Okay, so now that we've disappeared x from our denominator, it makes this problem much easier to solve. Now we just need to solve for x by solving this expression. And there's only x in one place, so that makes life so much easier. You just need to multiply both sides by 0.15 and then take the square root. When you solve for x, you actually get the exact same value. 
well, okay, with sig fig rounding <laughs> that you got when we used the quadratic equation. It won't always be exactly the same like this problem, but it is usually pretty dang close. So now we know what x is, we plug in and solve for our equilibrium expressions, concentrations, and we're done. And that's it. Plug in and solve, we got the exact same answers, but significantly less mathematical effort required. Now it is always good if you have the time to check and make sure that your assumption that x is negligible is valid. So we're gonna check and see, is x actually less than 5% of the initial concentration? Let's find out. To check if the x value is less than 5% of the initial concentration, we're just gonna calculate the percentage of x out of the initial concentration. So just like a part out of whole, percent calculation normal stuff. Well, when you calculate the percent of x out of the initial concentration, it turns out to be a lot less than 5%. That means our assumption was valid. Part of the tricky part about the x's negligible approximation is identifying when you can do the approximation and when you can't. So here is a very quick question number two, and it says for this given reaction, under which of the following conditions would you be allowed to make the x's negligible approximation? And oh, there will be multiple correct answers. I really, really, really think you should try this because as I said, it's probably the hardest part of the whole process. So even if you are epically wrong, try this problem first. There are gonna be multiple correct answers. See what you think. And when you are ready to check your answers, unpause the video. It's essential to notice what was the reactant and what was the product in this particular equilibrium system. Because remember, to say X is negligible, you either want a tiny K, starting from mostly reactants, or you want a gigantic K, starting from mostly products. That allows us to narrow this down to B and D. In answer choice B, you're starting with reactants, and you've got a teensy tiny K. Starting with D, well, in that case, you're starting with products, but you've got a very large value of your equilibrium constant. All right, guess what? I have one of these for you to try. Aren't you excited? So you are gonna try this lovely problem, see how far you can get. And after you have tried it, go ahead and unpause the video and we'll see how it went. Okay, so they're giving you the equation and they wanna find the equilibrium concentrations. So, you know, we need a rice table, but, oh, so sneaky. Instead of giving you the molarity like you actually wanted, uh, they gave you moles and they gave you volume. But that just means we need to find molarity first. Easy peasy. So there's the initial concentration of I2. But doing that made me realize that I wrote down the entirely wrong reaction, so let me fix that. Okay, now we have the right equation and the initial concentration of I2. So it makes it really easy to fill in our rice table. You'll notice that I didn't label the rice table with the rice part of the side. You don't have to. It's totally just a mnemonic to help you remember which step goes where. But if you, like me, are lazy, <coughs> efficient, <laughs> then you don't have to write it if you don't want to. However, we do need to solve for x. So let's go ahead and plug into our equilibrium constant equation expression. <coughs> okay, so now we've plugged into the equilibrium constant expression. This is where we need to see, oh, that looks kind of messy. I might need a quadratic equation to solve that. I think I might be able to make that X is negligible approximation, but you gotta check. Well, I'm starting from reactants, okay. So I need a really tiny value of K and hey, times 10 to the negative 12, super tiny. If you haven't tried rewriting this after saying X is negligible, I want you to try it. Pretty, pretty please. Even if you don't do all the math and everything, just rewrite it. What would it look like with the assumption X is negligible? And how would you justify that? And when you're ready to check, unpause the video. All right, how did you do? Did you notice we just took away the X when it was being subtracted, but we left the X's alone when they're being multiplied? And of course, we added our quick justification. Now, please, oh, please remember that when you are solving this mathematically, because the rest of this is just the math, don't forget that you're distributing that squared sign to the two 
and to the x. So we have 4x squared over 0.45 is equal to 5.6 times 10 to the negative 12. Now we just solve for x. Once you solve for x, then we just plug x into the equilibrium constant the concentrations. <laughs> I almost forgot. And then we were basically done. Very exciting. And that's all you need to do. Notice that I was underlining the 9 in the 7.94 on x. That's because we only actually get to keep two sig figs. So our final answer for both of them ended up having two sig figs. If you have time, it's always good to check the validity of your approximation. So let's try it. Well, if you check, x is super tiny. So x divided by the initial concentration 0.45 is 0.0002%. Heck yeah, that is definitely less than 5%. Now, it is true you will not always be able to use the x is negligible approximation. In fact, on Mastering Chemistry, they may even ask you to use the quadratic formula. Not on the AP Chem test, though. However, there is another trick that shows up on the AP Chem test that can help you avoid the quadratic equation. It's called the perfect square. So let's take a look. Basically, in this case, you're trying to find a setup where you can take the square root of both sides and get rid of the x squared value that way, so you don't have to use the quadratic. So I think you should totally set up your rice table, and you could plug in for your equilibrium constant expression, Try this problem. Set it up. Honestly, you have all the skills to do it. And whenever you get stuck or you're ready to check, unpause the video. Now, this problem is given in terms of partial pressures, but you could use partial pressures in a rice table just like you can concentrations because this time they gave you a Kp value. Ooh. Once you have the rice table, plug into your Kp expression. Remember that a Kp expression needs parentheses, no square brackets. Okay, this is about the time in my rice table calculations where I start hoping that, wow, can I just get rid of that minus x? It would make my life so much easier. Well, I'm starting from just reactants. So, oh, look at that K. That K is not tiny. That's a pretty medium-sized k, so I cannot do the x is negligible approximation. Oh no. For your explanation or your math, you are not required to explain why you are not doing the approximation. I just wrote that down because I wanted you to know. Of course, what you do need to do on the free response is solve the problem. So we can't simplify this at all, but we can write what it's equal to, our kp value. And here's the part you were looking for. Here's the fact that you can simplify it even though x is not negligible. It's because you've got something squared on the top and something squared on the bottom. So mathematically to solve this, you can make your life pretty easy. You are just gonna take the square root of one side and set it equal to the square root of the other side. And you know, math. And look at that. We have two x over 0.2 minus x equal to eight. No more x squared term winning. Of course, we still have to solve the problem, but now it's not so bad. And once you solve for x, you just need to plug in and solve for the equilibrium partial pressures, if we can find the space. And when you solve for the equilibrium partial pressures, you can see that x is most definitely not negligible. In fact, when we subtracted x, that took away the vast majority of the initial amount of your reactants, which makes sense, because k is greater than 1. All right, well that is it. Fun with tasty rice tables and approximations. So thank you for playing with delicious chemistry.